when you came in for the original one night stands that they had, you I think you wrestled with Rhino on the first one. Yeah. And then you had Rey Mysterio on the second well, one. Th- those matches they gave me creative freedom, I should say. They they didn't uh, hug tie me at all. Only thing was when I was wrestling Rhino, Vince goes, Just break a table. I go, No. I said, Okay, I'll, I'll break a table. I'm gonna set it up like this. And I'm going to tease it, and I'm going to come back to it and break it. He goes, no, just break it. I go, no, I, I got to set it up, come back to it, and then break it. He goes, no, just break it. I said, okay, I'll just break it. But I didn't. I, I set it up, teased it, came back to it, boom. And then, then I go, do you see, not see what I mean? Then he saw, see what I meant. He didn't know. He, he was just trying to get the spot in. He didn't know the spot meant something. And there was more to you than just, just the spot itself. Yeah, more than just break a table. It's got to you know, look like part of the match. That's why I didn't like pulling tables out from under the ring or walking down carrying a table. Because why would you carry a table? Why would you, a table even be a weapon? <laughs> Why reason I took weapons because it was by ringside. I would never be, hey, give me a table. I'm going to go out and fight this guy. <laughs> like, who would you? <laughs> <laughs> table weighs more than I do. And, you know, it's ridiculous. So why would I, I, I completely disagree with how they make, uh, make me and everybody else use the tables by pulling them out from under the ring or have a stack of them under the ring. Why would there be a stack of tables? There, a stack of tables don't happen to follow a ring around unless, unless you put it there, you know? Now, how I broke a table was, like I said before, uh, I used it because it was a ringside uh, furniture, a chair, a bell, a, a microphone, ring announcer, a table, you know, stuff that you need for wrestling, but not that, uh, not, not that far-fetched. So I used that table because it was there. Not because it was a it was a prop. It got to be a prop later to where it was hidden under the ring or you walked down with it or whatever. Yeah, like you said, it doesn't make any sense. But I would never go into a real fight either asking, give me a Give table. me a table, I'm going to go fight this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad as hell, give me a table. <laughs> now, Cactus Jack, he used to do something unique with the table. He'd pick it up and suplex it on me, which was pretty cool. I couldn't do it, the table was too heavy. Did you like the match that you had with uh, Rey Mysterio at the second one? Yeah, yeah, I did. Like I said, that they get, pretty much gave us our own creative control. Nobody ripped, breathed down my neck. The only thing was, they, they asked me what it was I gonna do too many times, and, and uh, so I, I bullshitted them. And then I went in the ring and did, did what I did. But but I didn't know that would work in Kansas. I thought that would show them I don't need to be uh, choreographed or taken by my hand. That I that I can do the job without question. And it didn't mean that. It meant that I wasn't following the rules. It would have shown that the assertiveness. You're, you're that's showing, what I thought. You know? It's like, well, that's why we hire him, because he's been here, he's been wrestling 20 years, and he has wrestling instinct. Not because he does what he's told, because he knows what to do. You know? Yeah, and you would think when the, the shit hits the fan, so to speak, in a match, that you, you, you want someone like you that could think on the fly and change, and you know fix it. You'd think you got you get the pat on the back for that. But you don't, not there anyways. Was there any talks to continue that with, with Ray? Because I don't think you guys did much after that. No. Uh, I don't know. There was never, not, they never talked to me about anything. He, he was, yeah, he's good. It was good. But there was never no talks about a rematch or, or anything like that. I don't know. They just went a different direction. What was the final straw for you? When did it just become work and really just not creative for you anymore? Where, where, where well, did you just say that? One day I come in late because I knew I had to wrestle this guy, this vampire dude. And and so I called and said, I'm going to be, I called Johnny uh, Laronitis. I, I, call, I called him to tell him I'm going to be late. He starts yelling at me over the phone. I said, okay, and I hung up on him. I show up way late. And then he goes, Terry, you're doing this and you're doing that. And I go, I don't think so. He goes, why not? I said, I said, my neck hurts. I'm not doing nothing. He goes, you worked in pain. You worked with pain before. I said, not anymore. I don't. So uh, they end up and firing me after that. I, I kind of quit, and they fired me. But you weren't interested at that point. I mean, you're in pain. Oh, too, I, I, had, right? I had enough, but I, I should have tried. I should have tried harder to fit in. But uh, it, it would never. It would have never fit. But I should have tried harder. It was nothing against. What was it Kevin Thorne? I guess. The, no, the nothing. But nothing personal. That was just business, and they, you yeah. know. I, I had to draw a line. That's where I drew the line. So I, I'm not wrestling this guy because I'm, my, my neck hurts. And and my neck did hurt. Not not enough to make me quit a match. I was mad enough to quit a match. The way he was yelling at me over the phone, he was talking to me like a little kid. <laughs> I was just sort of giggling inside. I said, this guy don't know what's going to happen. 
And really, he's just a management position. This isn't yeah. Vince telling you this. This isn't. He scolded uh, me, calling me yelling at me, Terry. 